We're going to briefly go through the instruments in your kit. Um, one by one, these instruments are either area specific or universal. The first instrument is the anterior sickle. You note that it has two sides and they are not mirrored. One end is slightly at a 90 degree angle and the other end has a curved working end. The next instrument is the modified sickle, which it has mirrored ends offset at a 90 degree angle. You notice the extra, the extra bends in the shank make it accessible in the posterior and proximal. There, on each of these instruments, there are two cutting edges on each side. The next instrument in your kit is the Gracie 1 2. It has a cutting edge on each end. The ends are balanced and it is used for the anterior teeth. The Gracie series that we're looking at now is specifically designed for uh, fine to moderate calculus in deep, narrow pockets. Your Gracie curettes are after five, meaning they're designed for pockets of the depth of five or more and with rigid shanks. The next instrument, while you do not have in your kit, you should be familiar with it. It is the Gracie 7-8. It has um, one cutting ed on, edge on each side. It is used for both buccal and lingual surfaces in the posterior from the distal surface to the mesial. The next instrument is the Gracie 1112. It is for the mesial surfaces of the posterior teeth, used from the mesial line angle into the mesial or from the distal line angle all the way into the mesial. The next instrument is the Gracie 1314. It is used from the distal line angle into the distal. The last instrument is the Barn Barnard 5-6. It is a universal. It has two cutting edges on each side. Make sure to review the design characteristics of each of these instruments as you go through this practice session. Go. The first instrument demonstrated is the anterior sickle. Right now I'm using the straight end. It is used anterior in a short, controlled stroke, keeping that lower one-third in contact with the tooth at all times, You're using short pull strokes. Note that due to the fact that this instrument ends in a sharp tip, it is not used subgingively. The only exception is if the tissue is quite distendable, you're able to go possibly a millimeter apical to the free gingival margin for calculus removal. You always go to the most apical portion of the calculus and remove in a short, powerful pull stroke after exerting lateral pressure against the tooth. The terminal shank is kept parallel to the long axis of the tooth. And notice how the clinician is scaling in the direction she's moving. And notice that beautiful rocking arm motion on her finger rest. Anterior teeth are divided <coughs> surfaces away and towards. I was working surfaces away from me from a operator 11 o'clock position for a right-handed clinician. For surfaces towards me as a right-handed operator, I can choose to stay at this position or I could choose to move down to the 7 or 8 o'clock position. Notice how controlled the strokes are. Uncontrolled strokes can result in tissue laceration, trauma to the patient, or actually getting the instrument caught in the contact. And again, another important thing that was already mentioned that you need to remember is it's the tip one-third that is engaged to remove calculus. And now the clinician is demonstrating the curved sickle. 
interior sickle. The modified sickle is used in the posterior from the distal line angle into the distal and then from the distal line angle into the mesial. To find the correct working end, you place the instrument parallel to the long axis of the tooth, the, the terminal shank is parallel, the handle should point out of the mouth, and the very last bump or curve of the instrument will point towards the tonsil. This is the correct working end for the maxillary right buckle teeth. If I had the incorrect working end, the handle would point towards the back of the mouth and that last bump or angle of the instrument would point towards the front, which is not the correct end. And that would actually be impossible to do as you move further posteriorly in the mouth. This instrument is used for supragingival calculus. Again, in a short pulled stroke, working from the distal line angle to the distal, and the distal line angle into the mesial. The use of this modified sickle in the posterior has somewhat been replaced by the ultrasonic instruments. This instrument is the Gracie 1-2. It is used for anterior teeth, both supra and subgingival, the teeth in the anterior are divided into surfaces away and towards. Right now I'm going to be doing surfaces away from me for a right-handed operator, starting at tooth number six. You'll notice there's a couple of really important visual cues to know that you have adapted the right end. You should never clearly see the face of the instrument, and the terminal shank should be parallel to the surface that you're scaling. And you'll notice she keeps the toe one-third adapted and uses a rocking or rolling arm motion for the strokes after exerting lateral pressure. Lateral pressure is dictated by the amount of calculus present. In proper adaptation for calculus removal, you've got a face, instrument face to tooth angle of approximately 70 degrees. And because the Gracie curettes are area-specific curettes, the clinician will need to use both mirror image working ends to complete all surfaces. You'll notice the clinician has flipped the instrument to the opposite working end. We clearly do not see the face of the instrument, and we see parallelism with the lower shank, along with adaptation of the toe one-third and that beautiful rocking rolling arm motion. Next is the 1112 used for the mesial surfaces. This instrument can be used both from the distal line angle into the mesial or you can start at the mesial line angle into the mesial. The lower terminal shank is kept parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The toe one-third of the instrument is kept in contact with the tooth at all times. Notice the nice parallelism of the terminal shank on this tooth that is tilted in a mesial direction. And notice how nicely the clinician rolls around the mesial line angle right into the mesial to get under the contact. Go. 
Next is the 1314 used from the distal line angle into the distal. The terminal shank is kept parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The handle points out of the mouth and again this last bump or the last curve of the instrument points towards the tonsils. The insertion angulation is different from the working angulation is that the face of the instrument comes in contact with the tooth or at a zero, as close to zero as possible of an angulation in comparison to the tooth. And you'll notice during the exploratory stroke, the last bump before the terminal shank points occlusally. And during working, it points towards the tonsils and you have parallelism of the lower shank. A nice rocking wrist or four Can motion. I now notice how if you have the incorrect working end adapted, that it can look like it's hugging the tooth, but look at the relationship of the terminal shank to the tooth. There's no way you could get that uh, properly adapted because you have the trailing blade as opposed to the correct cutting edge. So even though it looks like it's hugging, it's not correct unless you see parallelism of the lower shank. Okay. Lastly is the universal. The universal in your kit is the Barnard 5-6. The terminal shank again is parallel to, lax, to the long axis of the tooth. There's two cutting edges on this instrument so you want to be mindful of that when you're instrumenting. The cutting edge is at a 90, honed at a 90 degree angle. The correct working end is found by keeping that terminal shank parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The handle will again point out of the mouth and that last curve of the instrument will point towards the patient's tonsils. Keep in mind this instrument has a thicker shank, more rigid with a thicker working end, so it's for moderate to heavier calculus with retractable tissue. The posterior teeth is separated from the distal line angle into the distal and then the clinician starts again at the distal line angle and rolls the instrument into the mesial. Notice how she used the same working end, just opposite cutting edges. One cutting edge for the distal, the instrument is turned, and the opposite cutting edge on the same end works into the mesial. You'll notice on the mesial, for the correct adaptation, your handle is almost parallel to the surface you're working on. We'll continue this instrument into the anterior teeth. Again, the anterior teeth are separated surfaces to what, towards and surfaces away. We'll begin with surfaces away from a right-handed operator. Terminal shank is not parallel to long axis of the tooth. The handle is parallel to the long axis of the tooth at this point and the toe one-third of the instrument is adapted to the tooth and you cannot see the face as opposed to the incorrect working end. The face of the instrument is visible which should not happen. We'll go to the correct working end. And again, this would be the instrument of choice for heavier calculus with retractable tissue because it's a bulkier blade that's honed at 90 degrees. Two active cutting edges on each end. It, it, it will remove calculus in all areas of the mouth, hence the name Universal Curette. And you'll notice the clinician makes access easier by asking her patient to Turn right, left, tip chin up or down. We'll continue with surfaces towards on the anterior teeth. Now you notice she's flipped the instrument to the opposite working end. But the surface is facing back toward the clinician. So with the universal in the anterior to complete 
both surfaces of the tooth, you must flip to the opposite working end. In the posterior, it's the same working end to complete the posterior tooth, but opposite cutting edges on the same end. And go. The 1516 instrument can be used similar to the 1112 from the distal buccal line angle into the mesial surface. The lower one-third is kept in contact with the tooth, the terminal shank parallel to the long axis. Last bend of the instrument points towards the tonsils and the handle out of the mouth. With this instrument, it has multiple bends in the shank, which makes access a little bit easier in deep pockets, our teeth that are a little out of alignment, especially in the maxillary right buckle is used of in the more advanced periodontal clients. Correct working end is terminal shank parallel to the long axis of the tooth. The handle points out of the mouth and that last bend of the instrument points towards the patient's tonsils. Lower one third, toe third of the instrument is kept in contact with the tooth. So as you can see it's used just like the Gracie 1314, but as the clinician mentioned, more advanced perio, deeper pockets, a little bit better access.